Welcome back, and uh, we are joined with Chris Harris. Chris, welcome back to the program. What's the latest on the WIP, the Waste Isolation Pilot Project, in Carlsbad, and uh, here in America, with a K, and uh, the Japanese disaster of unbelievable proportions is expanding every day. The Fukushima Zilla monster is out of the cage. <clears throat> it's out of its ocean floor. It is stalking the population of Earth. And of course, while the population of Earth is distracted and lying to each other of how bad this is and how bad it will get. What's happening? I guess the biggest news as far as um, Fukushima is concerned is we were discussed last week that they were going to start dumping uh, lots of uh, what we call uh, runoff or, or water that's groundwater. And instead of storing it in tanks, it's time to start releasing it to make room. And we're finding that the water has so much tritium in it that uh, the release permit, which says uh, perhaps only 1,500 uh, becquerels per, I think it's per week, I have to check on that again, is being exceeded even before a week is up. So they have to stop. They have to stop dumping the water and start storing it again. So it can't even make their release permit. Release permits are usually written so that you could you could actually accomplish it. And so it looks like they're um, not able to do it because the water has too much tritium in it at this point. So they have to keep stopping uh, the dumping, you know, or they won't oh my, oh violate my. the wrong release permit. In other words, so they in other words the, the release permit basically says, now, 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 TEPCO. You can't kill the oceans, the Pacific Oceans, and the people east, including North America and Europe, etc., that quickly. You got to slow the, the scale down and slow the clock. You can't kill them that fast. Yeah, not in one day. You can't kill it all in one day. You have to stretch it out. You got to stretch it out over a month. period of time. You know, yeah. you know, right. we got a exactly. schedule here for Armageddon. This is the biological Armageddon. This is, you know, genome again, let's put it that way, the human genome of living things in the oceans, the genome of the population, the epigenetics of these toxic radiotoxins added to electrotoxins from smart meters and genetically modified foods and stacked vaccines and mineral depleted soils and nanoparticles in the upper atmosphere of thorium, barium and aluminum. Guess what? You got Armageddon soup. And I can tell you the only effect of this is going to be basically to sterilize a population that will not only dumb down, but will basically have very little contact with their soul because they'll be so poisoned they won't be able to think straight and they'll just be dead, uh, <laughs> if you want to call dead weight for the New World Order to eliminate. And, and that's where I see this going. I, I just, I'm amazed when I talk to politicians or if other people will say, that's a conspiracy theory, Deagle. I said, look at my radiation detector. Look at the records that are being kept. In fact, we're setting up this. Are my, I'm going to have a site here with a dedicated radiation detector that will be hooked into the Rents network. I'll have his, 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 a link directly up there so that you'll have an access to that Rents network detector link all along the coast here. We're just a ground, uh, ground level. A lot of the radiation is high in the atmosphere. And this is only the start of the disaster. Now they're actually admitting to physically not even filtering the water. They're just going to take the pumped water loaded with tritium and other isotopes and just dump it straight in the oceans. They've already been doing not 300 or 500 gallons, probably more like 1,000 or 2,000 gallons a day of highly radioactive water. And we don't know how many of these steam jets created by the reactor corium underground vented out in the ocean floor. They talked for a while about putting hundreds of square miles of concrete and other uh, material to block it so it wouldn't bubble up from the ocean floor. These people are crazy. Uh, tell us about that too. I guess one would have to try to figure out where all this tritium is coming from. I know it's, it sounds like a joke, but it's not really a joke. And the reason why I'm saying that is I know we know where it comes from and, and what, what happened, but usually tritium is a product or a byproduct of uh, spent fuel pool cooling. So does that mean uh, all the water uh, during the original event uh, splash all out of this, but the entire content splash out of the spent fuel pool and and find its way into the groundwater. Uh, this is this is upstream of the plant. You know, the groundwater is flowing from well, the mountains well, down. Well, well, our two enemies are water and neutrons, and this is a product of neutrons. So if you get a neutron flux, which means you're getting hypercritical reactions, you're going to get neutron flux beams underground. They're going to hit groundwater and turn it into deuterium first, and then tritium, and you add two neutrons. Yep. That's what you have. Neutrons, what they do when they do this and create tritium deuterium, they intercalate in the DNA because they're not the same size and shape as regular water molecules, so this shows change the boiling point and the freezing point of water. 
They also get in your DNA in the double helix, and they actually displace the DNA one codon, so it slips it one base letter over. So it screws up your DNA not by frying it like cosmic rays or x-rays. It screws it up by simply sliding it over one base pair. That's really bad. Yeah, so I know the, the way the way you test uh, test a person to see if they have a tritium uh, in their body at all is using saliva tests, and because they, because it's so pervasive, it just goes right on in, and it and it stays right inside the, in the system. It's hard to get rid of, and it, it does all the uh, all the uh, mischief that you just mentioned. But what I'm trying and, and what you what you you definitely uh, went along the same lines that I was thinking. So we have to consider: did it all come from the central, or is there was there a fission going on elsewhere? And and now we're seeing the the products of that. In any event. There's certainly a lot of it, and it's certainly uh, violating the release permit. They didn't expect to have that much, so they have to stop, and they have to. I wonder who. I wonder. Uh, I wonder who signed the clock. Who signed the release permit? Was it Satan or one of his minions? <laughs> uh, well, somebody, somebody from uh, Tepco. So yeah, yeah, I guess so yes. just a minor, minor <laughs> minion. My minion. It wasn't Satan. He's too busy. Uh, okay, what's right. going on at Whiplant? I got uh, Ernie Gunderson's made some statements on YouTube as well and on Vimeo uh, now, which is good that he's coming up with some statements. Uh, you know, the, the, what, what we're finding now, and again, we reported this last week, that you discovered, is it's not just at the at the Waste Isolation Pilot Project. It's very probable from the Department of Energy that they did this in a number of places because they quote, wanted to go green. So they did go green, but they created not only methane generating, but a nitroso compound generating, which is like nitroglycerin, compound in these casks that makes them all become bombs. So how many sites do you think now with your research, or is it right across the board, across the country, where when they make these green uh, radioactive kind of storage containers that have now bombs, they have at least anywhere from, what is it, two to 500 in, at the whip plant alone, but how many yeah. other sites are like this uh, across the United States? So do you have any idea or ballpark? Well, I have one one ballpark, and I think something might might involve Hanford also. It's another Department oh of Energy site. That's I the worst some, possible place for this to be. That. P- yeah, because I, I knew about Hanford from one of my uh, colleagues in the American Academy of Environmental Medicine, also on the board. And he was actually one of the Shell Oil uh, engineers that actually took care of the Superfund site of Hanford for years, and also Rocky Flats. So he gave me the inside poop of what was going on because I was one of the docs under Reserve Admiral John Hughes, who took care of the uh, the Nova employees who were doing radio toxins uh, measurement of the groundwater and clay, etc. Out at Rocky Flats, and the place was ten thousand to a million times more radioactive than they thought. Uh, in fact, there were people walking around and jogging around the area with a chain link fence around it. And it wasn't fit for people to walk around except if they were in a rad suit. So it, it's well, really bad to hear about Hanford because Hanford, other than the bunking our cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, which is an open pit of nuclear waste, Hanford is the most radioactive site on Earth, uh, as well as Rocky Flats. These two, two, two are two biggies. And the one in Hanford has got these literally underground vats that are literally boiling like cauldrons of death. Leaking, bubbling, exploding, and now you tell me if they change this green kind of casks of, of Hades, of uh, kitty litter, green kitty litter, <laughs> now we're in trouble. Hanford, whoa, Columbia River, wow. Back in a moment. Chris, I want you to continue your uh, dialogue on what's going on in Fukushima. I don't see around the world any nuclear policies that are going to remediate the old-style reactors from tsunamis, earthquakes, volcanoes, extreme weather. I see only a sea of disaster coming. So tell us what's going on in Fukushima. What's the latest uh, items you want to talk about? Well, I guess one other uh, item of note would be that a long time ago, I know that we conjectured uh, that where containment had broken in unit well, we do. We've already been through Unit 2, and we were correct about that due to pictures. And some new footage came out showing Unit 1 also 
breached containment in the downcomer region <clears throat> where the where a downcomer goes uh, from the containment vessel into the Taurus through a structure called bellows. And there are right. there are uh, a bunch of. I think of these, they, uh, I think they figured that, that reactor reactor one broke actually, not from the power blackout of the diesel generators, but it was actually a physical rupture of the containment vessel at that yeah. Taurus area that occurred with the earthquake. So it was bad enough, just like an OI, one of the reactor containment uh, storage tanks actually broke and they lost 440 gallons of, of highly radioactive water. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's certainly supposed to withstand uh, that kind of jostling about what... Uh, Oh, well, wasn't it, well, this was actually bigger than a design base. So I guess that we could segue into what's going on uh, with our uh, design basis earthquakes that we're finding that are much greater or have a potential to be much greater than we've predicted, therefore uh, greater than any of the plants here can withstand. And that, you know, that I'm still going through those reports, too, and there, there's hardly any of them that are unscathed where they can just say, oh, I'm, I'm good. You know, we, we're not going to get anything worse. They all have to do something. If it's anything from at even um, doing uh, sharpening the pencils, that's what we've always talked about, anything from sharpening the pencils, which is not a cheap, uh, easy process, to actually physically uh, modifying the structures of the plant. And that also is extremely expensive. So none of them are getting off unscathed just due to the the new type of expected seismic activity that we hadn't previously considered before. So, you know, uh, we're, we're finding that, uh, sure, something could happen here, and we have to take steps to to either prevent it or mitigate the consequences of such a a, a, well, they're, not, they're, they're, they're not and moving quickly of, enough. Are, you, are, are we getting more of these reports finalizing what needs to be done and who, who's going to do it and how who's going to pay for it? Because all these utilities, these nuclear fatility, utilities are running on a insurance and a catastrophic deficit where the public has to pay for it. It's a rate payer. Uh, there's not a nuclear plant that's ever been run that actually has been run at a positive financial. When you take, take into the account of insuring against disasters, there's no nuclear plant anywhere that's actually 80, made a buck. What we have is a situation where, where the people constantly pour in money into a, an ever losing situation where after a number of years these reactors are going to break down. They're old technology, they have the nuclear ice stuff stored on site, and they're not designed to handle extreme weather or earthquakes or tsunamis. So uh, it's, just, it's just a disaster which decade is it going to, going to blow apart. And they're not moving the radioactive waste off any of these reactors anywhere. I don't see any world reserve place where some countries just say, yes, we'll take all your waste at our tin mine in South Africa or whatever. No, nobody's doing anything about it. And the thing in Japan is they tried to open the OY reactor and the judges actually stopped it. That's another amazing situation. I'm sure that, uh, that Abe was so upset by it, he almost turned inside out. <clears throat> because being of the Um Shinrikyo death cult, uh, Prime Minister Abe would have a freak out because he realized that the rate of death in Japan is just not fast enough. I mean, well, most people don't realize the black mold is all over Tokyo because the there these radiotoxic molds love they call it they call it Fukushima their vitamins, and we can remember these highly charged uh, molecules to some life forms actually make them get gigantism. It's not genetic mutation. They, it energizes these damn fungi and certain plants. And so when she get gigantism of things like magnolia plants, that's what's happening. And we saw it after Fukushima, uh, after Nagasaki and Hiroshima. There was a lot of gigantism that occurred there. It faded quickly because there's only short-acting isotopes that were left, except for a few long. But Fukushima Daiichi is going to start causing lots of problems, not just in Japan, but here in North America and Europe as, as well, because it's not just going around, e, you know, west to east. It's going transpolar as well to Europe and China and Russia and elsewhere. It's really going to get nuts. But I guess we've characterized it in the past as a uh, perfect dirty bomb with no off switch. And I, I don't see an off switch right, right now. I mean, they can't even... They can't even uh, they well, we, 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 some ideas we, and, we, we came up with ideas to, to stop it. We can stop yeah. it. Uh, and systematically, they, yeah, I'm, I'm just about finished putting the book together. It's, by the way, uh, you're a co-author in a sense because a lot of the emails you sent back to me and it says always at the end of each email, keep in the uh, the uh, the uh, it covered for 30 years. You know the the isotopes, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so they, okay. Uh, so if we didn't have people like you that were actually trying to stop it, this is like uh, 
throwing, you know how the, the, the juggler will throw those big knives in the air? They're flaming. Only these knives aren't only flaming, they're also radioactive and blasting out neutrons and gamma rays. So you're throwing depleted uranium knives and they're on fire, let's say, something like that. <laughs> well, I've got to have a chance, an opportunity to speak with the <laughs> TEPCO uh, representative uh, next month uh, on a almost unrelated subject, but not quite. And so I'll have a chance to uh, pick his brain and ask him some questions directly. It'll be my, uh, one of my first opportunities well, well, I know, to do that. I know they got that new robot there. Is that robot doing anything that they got that's supposed to be multifunctional? Firstly, I want to know what kind of ICs it has in it, integrated circuits, because neutron flux and gamma rays will fry most integrated circuits unless you either have tubes or you have a tubeless ferromagnetic chip called an I-chip or probably ferromagnetic chip made at Atmel Corporation that's EMP proof. But um, I'd like to know because I can't see how the robot is going to survive if it gets in a high, uh, you know, uh, electromagnetic free flux density area or high gamma or neutron flux density area. It's going to fry the chip. Eventually the crystal structure will break down, the circuitry will be non functional. And um, they need to actually either have remote, like cabled robots or robots with these proper advanced chips in order for it to go ahead. But a lot of the, the, the technology they don't want to put out there because it's, quote, classified. You know, I don't understand our oh, government. Yeah. They, they won't use classified technology to save our lives and our genetics, yet they're, they're going to supply weapons of mass destruction to al-Qaeda and, and uh, elements of al Nursa al-Qaeda that want to have man pads so they can take out commercial airliners. So if you're flying to see your friends in Spain or whatever or go to Europe for a visit and tourism, you could have your jet blown out of the air by Al Nurse Al Qaeda, Kara, thank, with a little thank you note from the Satan avatar at Obama and his bunch of maniacs that they gave him these weapons of mass destruction to these elements of Al Qaeda. They say prayer to Allah. They get the, they have the missile all set up seven miles from the airport. They say, Allah, today you will be honored. We have said the prayer. We were ready for seventy-two virgins. Get him ready. Get him ready, Allah. We're coming. <laughs> yeah. well, it sounds pretty funny, but uh, you know what? I, well, I you got to use some dark humor in order to get plan. through to people. Yeah. You got the idiot Obama and these other people. What's going on with him in Benghazi, which Daryl Ice is opening. I hope he doesn't kill the committee, but what they need to do is get right down to the root of it, that while they're ignoring Fukushima Daiichi and things like the whip plant, we are literally giving weapons of mass destruction and man pads to terrorists that can kill us. Bad news. And it's almost like with the hopes that they do. That's not the only conclusion I could come up with. Hey, listen, Obama's thinking, please, Al-Qaeda, do it before my second term is over. I want to taste the power of martial law, and only you can grant me that wish. Grant me the wish, O oh Allah, of terrorism and death on American soil, so then I can be a true, full dictator. No more executive yeah, yeah. orders. I wave my fingers, my bony finger, and it shall be. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's hope that doesn't happen, although... Uh, that is happening. It's not yeah, going to happen. Again. It's in the process of the nascent stage of happening. That's what's scary. Right. That's why Obama needs to be... By the way, we're going to soon have... If anybody's out there is smart and are, are all of these people are taking care of the president, they need to get a packet of zip ties in their back pocket. So at some point, it's time to zip tie. Zip tie and take them away for a tribunal of military justice. Yeah, if the practice the zip tie move, so it happens pretty quick. Yeah. We should call this a zip tie movement, you know? Zip tie. Yep. Get these corporate guys, zip tie them. Get it. All the people in Bilderberg, zip tie those suckers. Wrist behind the bag, zip tie. What are you doing that for? Because well, you need to be a zip tie. That'd be good. A zip tie movement. All right. Well, where do I sign up? Let's go. Mm -hmm. um, Just get a packet at Walmart and you're all set. Don't even need a weapon of mass destruction. Just tell people, can you do this for me? Put both hands behind your back, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the TEPCO uh, managers, uh, all the all the U.S. contract companies that don't do a damn thing about TEPCO, all the uh, state senators that won't do radiation testing, all the people at Jordan, Jordy Labs, at uh, UC Berkeley, uh, Kai Vetter, zip tie them all.